Welcome to another special edition of uh, a series of the interviews that we've been doing uh, with a number of stakeholders. Uh, today we have the chair of the Federal Council of the DA, uh, Ms. Helen Zele, who will be speaking to us about a number of issues. As you know, as the SAPC, we've been uh, canvassing the views of many South Africans and, of course, uh, key stakeholders, uh, because at the end of the day, this is about our country. And, of course, as the official opposition, they have views. Uh, they are in government in some parts of the country and uh, are very interested in what is happening. Ms. Zile, good to have you uh, on SAPC. Great that you eventually caught up with me, Mzwandile, and it's wonderful to welcome you here at Nkululeko House. And you were running away, but <laughs> I got you. <laughs> you got me. You said you would and you did. Yes. No, thank you very much. So you're no longer in government as a person, not necessarily as the DA. Um, are you lonely outside? I know you're still very active in the party. It's not lonely. It's not lonely at all in the DA. It's a huge and very active family. I love working in the party now. It was good in government, but I move on. I'm the kind of person who moves on. I don't sit and long for the past. I think back on the happy memories. I delete the bad memories and I move on. That's my nature. The performance of the DA generally across the country, in the province and municipalities, um, are you happy or you would rather see something improved or changed? Well, we're always looking for continuous improvement. That's the nature of the DA. We try to get better all the time and we work every day to do that. So I'm very happy with the recovery of the DA. We went through a bad patch, culminating in the bad election result of 2019. But we're a resilient organization above all else. And now independent opinion polls are coming out with extraordinary results that corroborate our own polling that we do every week. And the results are looking very, very good. I mean, the Social Research Foundation said that we are now the largest party in urban South Africa. We've overtaken the ANC in the towns and cities of South Africa, which basically means that the DA, according to this research, has 37% of the vote in the major urban centers across South Africa, and the ANC only has 33%. So that is a huge watershed for South Africa, and I'm very pleased about it. Well, of course, you've just said those are opinion polls. Uh, the most reliable polls are the actual voting uh, days that will happen sometime in 2024? Well, not only in 2024, we have by-elections all the time, Swandile, and our last run of by-elections have been extraordinary. Mm -hmm have been extraordinarily good across all communities, across all provinces. So we have had a very good run and they're corroborating the opinion polls. So it's not that opinion polls are thumb sucks, not at all. And the DA's opinion polls are the most reliable in the country. In the last election, they predicted the result for every party within 1% of the vote they actually got. So these are reliable polls and we are very delighted about our growth. Overall in the country, obviously, we don't do as well as we do in the cities because urban voters tend to shift away from failing governments and give the DA a chance, which is a very good thing. And where the DA governs, they give us a bigger chance because they can see the DA difference. And in the country as a whole, well, the report poll had us only 11% behind the ANC. So that basically means that if we consolidate all the opposition votes behind the DA, we can overtake the ANC nationally. Well, I think we'll, we'll, we'll delve into that uh, a little later. Maybe let's speak about um, uh, the governance of the DA. Um, you are in Johannesburg, uh, the DA is in charge, uh, in fact, in all the metros um, in, this, uh, in Gauteng. Um, are you particularly pleased with what you are seeing happening here in these metros? You must understand that in most of these metros, the ANC has been in power for 28 years. 28 years of cadre deployment, 28 years of decay, 28 years of corruption, with a small break in between in some places. That means we are going to take a while to rebuild. I was very lucky when I became the mayor of Cape Town in 2006 in a seven party coalition, the ANC hadn't been in power that long. And so there wasn't all that much to fix. There was a lot to fix, but not everything. 
there were still really competent officials, CADA deployment hadn't hollowed out the administration, and we could build on something and show results very, very quickly. And people liked the DA difference and then gave us an overall majority. In Johannesburg, we have an eight-party minority coalition. Yeah. That is very, very difficult. In Ikuruleni, it is even more difficult because the minority is even smaller with which Tanya Campbell has to run a government. An enormous challenge, but we take on that challenge. We've got backbones of steel in the DA. We're up for any challenge and inch by inch where we govern, we will seek to make life better for everyone, especially the poorest of the poor, because they depend most on a competent government. Yes. yes. Um, I think perhaps just the question was, um, are you satisfied with the manner in which these metros are being run? Well, we've been through a stormy time. There was a vote of no confidence in Mpo Palace, our mayor in Johannesburg. That was totally unlawful and illegal. And I need to tell your viewers that that was caused by a party that has only one seat in the whole Johannesburg metro, that is COPE, Colleen Makubele, played a key role in bringing down Mpo Palace and bringing yeah. down our government I think, there. I think Ms. So the point that I want to make is, yeah. if you have an unstable government with tiny parties causing instability all the time, it is very difficult to govern. And the message to the voters is, if you want stable government, consolidate the vote, don't fragment the vote amongst tiny parties. So is that an admission that all is not well the way you want it here in Joe Bay? Of course the way we want it is to have an overall majority for the DA, absolutely. But I'm, I'm talking governance now, uh, given the service delivery challenges that still afflict the city. There are unbelievable service delivery challenges. I mean, you can see with all the entities, Pick It Up is one of them. Now, they're trying to launch the new fleet of Pick It Up, but SAMU is making life very, very difficult for them. So at every point you face the sabotage. So of course, I'd love the new Pick It Up fleet mm -hmm. to have been launched and released onto the streets of Joburg. My goodness, driving here from Bromfontein through Joburg, through Dornfontein, through Kensington, the place looks horrific. So are, are you confident that uh, your mayor, Mpo Palazzi, has got a handle on this? I'm very confident that she's got the backbone to deal with it. Michael Sun, her MAKO member responsible for this, is on the ground all the time. I was speaking to him on Sunday while he was doing the tours of the various pick it up routes. He is perhaps more distressed than anybody that the launch of the fleet had to be postponed because of the risk of SAMU action. And so we do what we can against an incredible amount of disruption, against ANC cadres who only want us to fail, against even some of our coalition partners who want us to fail. <coughs> Why would uh, your coalition partners want you to fail when, when, when you are working together with them? I think you better ask them. Uh, okay. Not me. What they normally say, we do ask them. Once you are in a coalition with them, you want to be the only voice. Of course not. The crucial point is that we give every single MAKO member their voice. We like to stick to the rules. That's what they don't like. Or some of them don't like. I can't generalize about them because we've got some very good and reliable coalition partners. But when we say let's stick to the coalition agreement that we only signed six months ago and let's not try to deviate and renegotiate the entire thing with a gun held to our heads, mm. that is what we call the rule of law. That is what we call fairness. It is not arrogance. From what you've just said, uh, Mrs. Zille, is that uh, it's very, very difficult, particularly here in Johannesburg. And uh, I, I, I realized that you actually dodged my question. I, I, I said, uh, do you think Dr. Mpopalaz has a handle on the situation? Given the fact that she's trying to run an eight-party coalition with a very complex administration, with many deployed cadres in key positions, not all, and with some coalition partners seeking to undermine her all the time, I think she's doing a sterling job. It is very difficult, much more difficult than I ever had to face in Cape Town. And you've got to have real guts to take it on. And we are with her all the way on this extremely difficult journey. Well, I'll, I'll move on.
Um, next door, um, where we are, uh, Eguruleni, you've had one of your partners, uh, coalition partners, Action SA, pull out saying you, you don't prioritize poor areas like the townships. Um, how is your working relationship with the Action SA? That's a very good question. I think that argument is totally disingenuous and they know it's not honest. They know how committed Tanya Campbell and the entire DA administration is to fixing service delivery, especially for the poorest of the poor who can't buy private services. So that's a disingenuous argument. Action SA finds themselves in an interesting position. They're trying to be two things at the same time. They're trying to be the main opposition to the DA, but they're trying to be in government with the DA. And that doesn't work very well. I think that they haven't worked out where they stand and what they are. They can't work out whether they want to work with the ANC or not. They certainly want to work with the EFF. They keep pushing it. And one of the real reasons that Action SA has given to us for pulling out of Ikuruleni is that we won't build a majority with the EFF. They want the EFF in government. And we in the DA say, no, we will not work with the EFF in a coalition government. It's, 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 it's very confusing, perhaps, to a voter, uh, maybe to politicians. It's, it's the game they normally play. Uh, that in Ekuruleni, they certainly are out of the mayoral committees. But in Jobek, they're still part of you and in Tswane. How do you reconcile that in one area you are able to work together, next door you are not? Um, do you see the Action SA as reliable partners? The truth is, you must ask the question about their inconsistency to Action SA. But I can't say that we see them as reliable partners because of the very contradictions that you are mentioning here. Sometimes they try to pose as the main opposition to the DA. Other times they try to pose as a reliable partner. We see them as opportunistic and as partners who are fair weather friends. When the going gets rough, they seek another route but they've he helped you to stay in government? Well, it's not an act of generosity. They're also in government. They also have their MMCs and their chairpersons of portfolios and their delivery portfolios that they want to deliver on. So they agree to be in government rather than opposition. And I don't think you should be really asking me about Action SA because they are the ones who keep saying you can't serve your voters in opposition. You have to be in government to serve your voters. So they are not doing it to be noble towards the DA or to sacrifice themselves for the benefit of the DA. They're doing it for their own advantage. How often do you speak to Hemen Mashab? We have COG meetings. Those are coalition oversight group meetings. I don't personally attend them. But I do know that John Stenhazen speaks directly to Herman Mashaba. That's a leader-to-leader -leader interaction. Um, but you have worked together, in fact, as in the chair that you you, 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 you you occupying, I know that you're also central. Obviously, the leader leads, and then you'll be delegated certain responsibilities. And I'm sure time and again, with your experience as we're talking even off camera, so it should come in handy in terms of advice. So that's why I was saying uh, how often, often, I mean, this is the person who's been your mayor at some point, by the way, in Jobek. Yes, look, I don't want to get into squabbling with Action SA. That is not really what the DA is about. We have our own vision. We know where we're going. We're fixing our own party. In fact, largely we have fixed our own party since the disruptions partly caused by Herman Mashaba in our party. So I don't want to get into squabbling with Action South Africa, truly. That isn't the vision or the direction of the DA. And I know that journalists often lead us into these kinds of debates which aren't very fruitful, and then they accuse us of squabbling. But if you ask me questions that take me there, I try to answer your questions, but I prefer to go on to more constructive things than talking about Action South Africa. The reason I'm speaking about Action SA, uh, it's not the only part I'm going to speak about, because you are 
doing business with them. I'm, I'm talking in the sense of being in the government. Maybe let's come to the EFF. Um, you've been very clear, and maybe perhaps to your credit, that uh, you don't want them. But when in, 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 in government, in, in Joburg, and in, in Egurlene, because of them. Well, that was their choice. We didn't elicit their support, and we can't dictate to the EFF how they vote. They decide how they vote, and if they vote for us and we get into the mayoralty because of it, we will not reward them with seats in a MAKO. We will not do formal deals with them in any way at all, but we will take the consequence of a democratic election and work from there. Why are you so opposed to the EFF? Well, when all the clutter and the dust in South African politics settles, South Africans will see that the real choice about the future of South Africa is between the EFF on the one side and the DA on the other side. Those are two parties that know exactly what they stand for. And they stand for completely opposing visions for the future of South Africa. We stand for a non-racial, open society in which every person can achieve their best potential in a social market economy. We believe in the rule of law, in constitutionalism, in all those things. The DA knows exactly what they stand for and where we are taking South Africa on the path to inclusion and prosperity for everybody. The EFF stands for the exact opposite. They stand for racial nationalism. They believe in racism as a formal policy. They believe that the party must control the state and that the state must control society. They reject the constitution. They often reject the rule of law and they don't believe in inclusion they set South Africans up against each other. So we are the two parties that have directly opposing visions, but at least we both know what we stand for. The ANC doesn't know what it stands for. Part of the ANC agrees with the EFF, part of the ANC agrees with us. So the ANC is going to disintegrate. This big blob in the middle is going to disintegrate. And the future choice in South African politics is going to be the DA versus the EFF. And it's, it's, the, the way you're characterizing it is it's, it's quite interesting. In fact, I think later on uh, uh, there's something I need to ask around those questions because I think you've been very consistent uh, in how you characterize the DA versus, in fact, you used to say that to the ANC. I see you've shifted to the DA, but it's fine. We're going to, to explore that further. But here is a party you, you have described in so unpalatable terms but somehow you receive when they give you the benefit of governing? Well, I don't think if Julius Malema were to listen to what I've just said about the EFF, he wouldn't disagree with me. He completely would agree with me that the EFF believes the party must control the state and the state must control society. That's not what we believe. Every country that has pursued that route has deepened poverty and has been driven into a totalitarian state. Destroyed freedoms, we don't want that. Julius does want that, and he says he wants it. So I think he would agree with my characterization. He doesn't agree with non-racialism. He doesn't agree with the Constitution. We believe in non-racialism. We believe in open opportunity and inclusion. He doesn't. So I think he would completely agree with my characterization. But why do you then accept his vote for you to be in government if, if he is such a bad person? I didn't say anyone was a bad individual. Okay. I just say okay. we, it's an ideology we okay. reject. We're not talking, okay, I know that uh, you use the word, the, the name of Julius. Yeah. So I'm also characterizing it. We are not necessarily personalizing it, but we're talking EFF. So I'm saying you have characterized the EFF the way you've, you've done but you are very happy to receive their vote for you to be in government. Why don't you say, you know what, we would rather be outside than receiving the vote of people who we know are completely at opposite end with us? Well, you see, when they give us their vote and the vote is counted, you take the majority vote 
as it comes out. That doesn't mean to say when you govern, the EFF controls you. Not at all. They voted knowing that we would not agree to be controlled by them. So the bottom line is they voted for us. They know exactly what our policies are. We're in government. We will implement our policies. And we have a very straight relationship with the EFF. We don't play games with them. They know where they stand with us and vice versa. So it's not like in Ikuruleni where the ANC promised to give the EFF the mayoralty and then they pull out at the last minute or they set all kinds of impossible conditions. We talk straight to the EFF. They know where we stand. We know where they stand. And I think that's a much more healthy kind of relationship. Well, let's come back to the, the DA matters. Um, at the beginning, you basically said that the DA is gaining strength. Um, but there's something that has been happening. I'm not going to call it a phenomenon. Um, I know you'll disagree with me. But there's been an exodus, in inverted commas, of prominent black leaders um, who some of them you have mentored, I'll put it that way. So why is that, since, since you're returned, by the way, as the chair of the council? Well, the bottom line is this. We are a voluntary organization. And people come and go in voluntary organizations all the time. Ironically, for example, Action South Africa lost more leaders, black leaders, in a week just in KwaZulu-Natal than we had lost in the past three or four years. The media didn't pick that up because they have a double standard about the DA. The media doesn't look at, for example, the white people in leadership positions who've moved on. The only people they're interested in when they leave a voluntary organization is when black people leave the DA. Now that's a complete double standard. Can I, can I just, I know, can I just um, interject there? You have in the past been very clear that you are building a non racial uh, organization in the form of the DA. In fact, at some point you've been saying is the most um, uh, diverse organization. It is still today. So we have seen leaders of the, of, of, of the DA who are black coming to join, and then we've seen them leave. And then the question is why? Far more have come to join since those few have left. I think it's four or five have left four or five people leaving in about five years is nothing, nothing in a party. In many other parties, they've lost far more people. And if you look at the new black leaders who've emerged in the DA, far more of them, but you deliberately don't see them because you want to paint a particular narrative about the DA. The DA is the only truly diverse party in South Africa. We're the only party that has a genuinely diverse leadership, that has a diverse voter base. You know that our voter base is one third black, one third colored, and one third white. Where would you get anything more diverse than that? We have over 450 black African public representatives in elected office. We have a completely non-racial top leadership in our party. If you look at the ANC, the top five, there's not a top six anymore, but there's a top five and a half, let's put it that way, are all black males. If the DA had a mirror of that, you'd be jumping up and down. Okay. But there's a double standard around the DA that I need to ask you as a representative of the media, why is that? Why can you look at the ANC that has driven out all its white leaders, except Carl Niehaus, <laughs> and you never ever say anything about that? I, I'm, I look at someone like uh, Bongani Baloi, one of your best mayors, um, living. I look at someone like uh, Musmai Man, who uh, was the leader of the DA, living. Hemen Mashaba, living. Mbalinduli. Um, there are so many. Those are the people who... Not so many. Yes. There are a few, yeah. and I can give you yeah. a chapter and verse on each one. Um, so looking at those, uh, I'm answering your question as well. Looking at those as a viewer, as a South African, I start to ask myself, what is it that they are uncom uncomfortable with? Because a few years ago, they were the ones who were saying to South Africans, come join the DA, but they are the ones who are saying, actually, we were wrong. So that is why we, we pursue this, uh, Ms. Zille. There are lots more who are saying we were right. And let me give you 
a projection that I'm very confident of. Those who have left the DA for other parties will be sorry. That's my absolutely confident prediction about the future. Let me say about Musi Maimani, I supported him to become the leader and to become my successor. Three years later, he commissioned a review as to why we did badly in the 2019 election. The people that he selected to do that review said the main reason was his weak leadership. That is why Musi Maimani had to step down. Yeah. It had nothing to do with me. His own commissioners said that he had not led the party well and that we lost many, many votes through weak leadership. That is what his own commission said. If you look at Herman Mashaba, he was going to face a vote of no confidence taken by the ANC, but would have been supported by many people in the DA caucus because of his leadership style. He became the EFF mayor of Johannesburg. Everyone knows that. And his own party was going to vote him out. That is why he left. Look at the details of every one of them. Bongani Baloy? Bongani Baloy, that I was very sad about. Bongani Baloy had a lovely chat to me three weeks before he announced he was leaving. He chatted about his future in the DA. He looked at his career prospects. My Maka guess... Maka Shulikana? My guess is... My guess is that they see that they potentially have better career prospects in other parties. I think Bongani Beloy has his eye very firmly on succeeding Herman Mashaba. There's a lot of tension now between Herman Mashaba and Bongani Beloy, and I think Bongani saw a shortcut to becoming a leader of a political party. Because we are drawing to a close now, there's the panel that is looking into uh, President Ramaphosa's um, possibility whether there's a case to answer uh, around the Palapala issue. So the DA, um, I think, did, didn't submit to that panel? The DA wanted to go through the uh, process. This, this, I think it was a section, I'm trying to remember exactly what section it is of the Constitution. They wanted to take that through the parliamentary process. They wanted to make sure that the parliamentary committee sat and analyzed the situation so that Parliament finished all the courses of action it needed to take. But the DA at some point wrote to, I think, FBI to, to, to check if I think the money uh, was, was lawful here. So why would they um, run to the US and not use the, 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 the internal processes? We are definitely using the internal processes. You see, in South Africa, it's illegal to be paid in foreign currency. And I think it is common cause that that money was in American dollars. Yeah. And so it is very important for us to establish how come a cash transfer was made to the president in American dollars when it is not lawful to be paid in foreign currency in South Africa. Looking at all of that, so what do you think of the president? I like Cyril as a person. I got to know him, I suppose, reasonably well in my time as leader of the DA and as the Premier of the Western Cape. I like him as a person, but I don't think he's got the backbone that is needed for that job. I don't think he's got the fight in him. And if there's one thing you need in politics, it's the ability to stand firm and fight another day. Is that the fight you're going to be as the DA putting up in 2024 to try and answer the NC? Absolutely. In 2024, our message is very simple. We can do it. If all opposition voters unite behind the DA, we can overtake the ANC and become the core and the leading party in a new government for South Africa that will fulfill the promise of an inclusive country, a prosperous country for all. Well, let me not spoil it any further. <laughs> well, that was the chairperson of the Federal Council of the DA uh, speaking to us about a range of issues. She still has got it in her. You, you, you can hear when she speaks that uh, she's really, really a politician.